Andy Summers, great to have you uh, coming back to Australia for the Crack Lens plus a missing string tour. Yeah. And, uh, I think last time we had you in Australia was, what, 2008? We rarely had you down here. I have played there two or three times on my own, maybe in the 90s. I don't know. Maybe. Mm. I did, I did some, some shows there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think well, I did at least two tours there, and I had a photography show in Sydney, I think, and I played some cities. I was in Perth. Oh, was that with the police? No. Yeah, well... I've been to Australia maybe four times in my life. Well, I know three with uh, another group of guys. Whoever they were, yeah. And whoever they were, and plus... Uh, plus uh... A backing group. <laughs> the Andy Summers backing group. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Yeah, yeah. Now, there is the new album, uh, Vertiginous Canyons. Um, has that been added into the set list now? Well, you know, some of the stuff I play, you know, particularly the opening number, is reminiscent, you know. I mean, all this stuff is, they're all guitar improvisations. So there's, there's it's not note for note or anything like that. You know, sonically, it's similar, yeah. Um, well, that, uh, you know, I've, Vertiginous Canyons, which has now come out as a recording, I made actually for a photography book, uh, it's called A Series of Glances. So it's a lovely photography book that was made by Tenois in Germany. And one of the things they requested as we finished up the print of the book was, could they put some music in? I went, music inside a book? I said, well, that's a pretty interesting idea. Because, you know, we score uh, music for movies. And, you know, this was a book of a visual book, you know, of photography. But they were able to do it, you know, where you can, um, I made eight tracks and that's what I did it for. I thought about it. I sort of looked at the book and I improvised these tracks, all with different sonic qualities, different sounds. And it came out really nicely. But I, I hadn't taken it very seriously as a record. But now everybody's jumping up and down about it. I guess I should do more like that. I made it basically in about three hours. And it, you get it on the book by going to, you know, one of those, Things you tap your phone on it, you get the thing, and you can listen to the music while you look at the photographs. Yeah, and of course, it's all streaming now anyway, so people can. Yeah, well, there you go. You know, yeah. we're in a different world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the uh, the tour uh, so far and the set list that I've seen so far uh, mm -hmm. draws heavily on uh, four of the albums: uh, Tribal Lum Luminescence, uh, mm -hmm. Metal Dog, The Last Dance of Mr. X, Yeah, Green Chimneys. The only uh, other song outside of my own stuff is that I play is the Thelonious Monk song called Round Midnight. It's a beautiful ballad. So it's a very nice solo guitar piece. I play that all solo with fancy chords and then in comes a sort of a rhythm section and I solo to it. It goes down a storm, you know, so, and then I play some Brazilian music with a sort of uh, edited version of Black Orpheus, the movie. And that's very nice. It's a marvelous song. And I play a couple of other pieces and then I play actually the piece called Tribo Luminescence, which, you know, talking about Australia, I went to Indonesia from, yeah, probably Perth, actually. And I went up to Bali and I got completely engrossed in all that and had a really great time. So I'll tell some stories about that. And Tribo Luminescence, the track was based on that visit. And uh, you'll see the photography is all of Balinese musicians and people in Bali. It's, it's lovely. Mm. Yeah, so you know, it's it's a pretty well balanced show. Uh, you know, I've been doing it on and off. I did thirty six to forty shows last year. I've just done another twelve. So as we've gone along, we've been able to get things better and better. So it's it's getting really smooth now. We've sort of got the hang of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, a couple of police songs in there too in the Sahara. Oh, absolutely. No, I, I was just in the Sahara quite early, and I love playing that. Mm. Yeah, it's a lovely melody, and you know, I. Personally, had been to the uh, Sahara Desert with a friend on a sort of travel adventure, so I shot quite a lot of pictures in in the Sahara in the desert, and uh, we use those to kind of illustrate the Tea in the Sahara song. They're, they're four songs that uh, you aren't credited on uh, with the police. Uh, you were credited on a number of songs: "Mother" from the Synchronicity album, "Be My Girl," "Atlantis." Uh, uh, Behind My Camel on Zenyatta and Amiga Man Ghost in the Machine. Do you ever give them a run life? 
No, the only I don't actually because I've made fifteen solo albums on my own. I don't. I don't feel I have to rest on the police. I mean, it's a kind of a mixed bag because you know, in two weeks I go to South America, to Rio. I'm playing in nine different countries in South America, and it's the band is called Call the Police, and we do twelve, fifteen police hits, and it's an absolute crowd winner. We sell out everywhere we go, and so I'm very familiar with still playing those songs on my own albums. Of course, I I don't do that because I did it already. So I, I play other music, and no, I haven't done it lately. But I used to go out and play whatever the last album was I was making. You know, for instance, I made a Thelonious Monk album, an album of all Monk tunes, and I did one of Mingus as well. I was very into that at that period, and I, I would play these live. You know, with different bands that I had. Mm. What about uh, this album? This was one of my favourite albums of the eighties. Yeah, the well, Trip album. You did a couple of Robert Tripp's. Yeah, I know Robert Fripp, and um, that is coming to life again. Um, Robert or his this guy he works with contacted me and said, "We want to, you know, put out the records again. Are there any extra tax?" Well, as it happened, you know, Robert's in England. I'm here in Los Angeles. I had all the tapes, the two inch tapes. And he asked if I would send them. Anyway, long story short, he found another 12 uh, outtakes. And I was, he eventually put it all together and he sent them back to me. And I was kind of knocked out by how good they were. I couldn't believe that we didn't put them out on an album. So Robert has a little label called something or other that he puts his projects out on. And they're going to put it out. I think it's going to get a lot of attention because I think it's going to be a sort of triple package, three CDs. Very nice. So I actually was pretty dubious about it. But uh, when I listened back to what we'd done, you know, and didn't use, I thought, okay, sure. So it, that is still alive. I think it's coming out in September, actually. Because I guess you were restricted at the time with what you could fit on two sides of vinyl. Back well, that's true, actually, back in the, those days. Yeah, it was earlier. Day. Now all of this stuff can be on the internet, whatever you want. Yeah, it's open house. Yeah. Any plans for you and Robert to get out, perform them together? Well, if it went to number one, I think we'd probably have to. <laughs> you know, at the time we talked about it, but of course I was in the biggest band in the world at the time. It was sort of impossible to get out of that cage. Robert was in uh, King Crimson and doing all that stuff. So there wasn't really that much opportunity. I suppose we could have really gone for it. Would have been, I don't know how tricky it would have been to play all those guitar parts. With, well, we would have had to have some sort of backing. But who knows, you know, I, you know, Robert's got a new kind of uh, the age he is popularity because he's doing these sort of crazy things with his wife, Toya, who's a very good singer. And, you know, so he has some, you know, he's, his head's up above the water at the moment. It's crazy. Who knows what's going to happen? You know, yeah, I would, like, I mean, that would be interesting and it would be a challenge and it'd be like entering another world. Um if I think if Robert and I went, particularly in the US, if we wanted to go out and do it, we could probably get a pretty good audience. Mm. Yeah, there's loads of guitar geeks out there, and they'd all want to come and see what's going on. Absolutely. What about the uh, the new synchronicity box set? Did you have anything to do with that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, these things get made. We sort of do have something to do with it, and we sort of don't. Basically, what happens is that the record company, because I guess it's with Sony now, it's gone through so many changes. Uh, they they have some A and R guy who gets creative, and obviously you've got to have the original album. There are a lot of outtakes, and there's a lot of extraneous material. So it's all in this giant package, which is called Synchronicity, because of course it was a giant number one record. Uh, it sold millions at the time, and I have actually quite positive feelings about it. I think I think already it's going to kind of go through the roof as a new record and to be out in vinyl and all the rest of it. So it's a very nice package. So basically the way our creative input is just merely approving things. Yeah, but you had a song that uh, sort of uh, uh, didn't make the album that started off as Goodbye Tomorrow and then became uh, Someone to Talk, someone to oh, talk yeah. to. Um, oh, talk about that fan, song you know. and why it didn't make the record in the first place. Probably internal uh, disagreements. It should have been on the record. I, I, I quite agree with you. I'll have to look at it. It be on that. the new record. Yeah, well, I'm, well, it should be. Yeah, I think it probably is. It, it, it is. 
Oh, is it? Good. It is. Well, um, <laughs> Believe me, Andy, it is. <laughs> that's good to know. Not over yet. Well, we've got all the uh, the tour dates coming up. Uh, it's going to be yeah. good to be back down here and uh, doing the shows uh, back in Australia. Looking forward to that. Sadly, we won't be hearing this, but we will be uh, maybe hearing something from uh, you and Robert soon. So I'm looking forward to that. And yes. it's great to catch up with you here today okay. at 11.com. I'll see you there.